This is the case of Juventino Ramirez, a man whose conviction was overturned because his defense team was repeatedly denied crucial evidence and the time needed to prepare for trial. So what went wrong? Let's break it down. On April 27, 2022, the Indiana Supreme Court issued a significant ruling in the case of Juventino Ramirez, who had been convicted of child molestation. The court concluded that Ramirez's trial was fundamentally unfair due to a series of procedural missteps, including the denial of his requests to view key evidence and the refusal to grant a short continuance when new allegations surfaced just for trial. The case highlights the impact that procedural decisions can have on the fairness of a trial. Let's go back to the beginning to understand how this all unfolded. Ramirez met Angelica Guzman at church, and in 2016, they got married. Soon after, Angelica's six-year-old daughter, AP, moved in with the couple. In 2019, after a visit with her biological father, AP told her mother that she didn't want to return home. Eventually, AP confided in Angelica that Ramirez had touched her inappropriately in the past. This disclosure led Angelica to report the incident to a local nonprofit, where AP lived. participated in a forensic interview. During the interview, AP stated that Ramirez had touched her vaginal area over her clothes on several occasions when she was seven and eight years old, and that he had apologized and asked her not to tell her mother. Based on AP's statements, the state charged Ramirez with one count of felony child molestation. From the start, the case was fraught with discovery disputes. Ramirez's defense team repeatedly requested a copy of AP's forensic interview, which was crucial for preparing his defense. However, the prosecution, citing a local rule, refused to provide the defense with a copy. This refusal was based on Allen County's local criminal rule 13, which required defense counsel to formally request copies of such recordings from the court and justify the need for them. Ramirez's attorney believed this rule conflicted with the broader Indiana rules of trial procedure, which generally support the right to access evidence. Despite filing multiple motions to compel the release of the video and offering to adhere to protective orders, the defense was only allowed to view the interview at the prosecutor's office during business hours, a condition that severely limited their ability to prepare effectively. Two months before trial, the prosecution announced that it intended to use the video at trial. Ramirez's defense again requested a copy, arguing that it was essential for trial preparation, but the court sided with the prosecution, upholding the restrictive local rule. Then, on the eve of the trial, the prosecution dropped a bombshell. New allegations surfaced during a conversation with Angelica and AP. These new claims included accusations that Ramirez had touched AP under her clothes and that he had tried to pressure Angelica into persuading AP to lie. This last-minute disclosure dramatically changed the scope of the case and forced Ramirez's defense team to scramble. Defense immediately filed a motion requesting a continuance, just one day, to investigate the new allegations, adjust their trial strategy, and potentially gather additional evidence. Despite these reasonable requests, the trial court denied the motion outright, citing that it was not timely, without considering the impact of these new claims on the defense's ability to adequately prepare. As if that wasn't enough, the defense again sought access to the forensic interview to redact inadmissible portions and prepare it for use in their case. But the prosecution shifted its stance, suggesting that they might not use the interview unless the defense's evidence called for it. The court accepted this workaround, leaving the defense in an uncertain position. Ramirez's trial proceeded under these challenging conditions, and he was ultimately convicted. However, his conviction was not the end of the story. Ramirez appealed, arguing that the trial court's decisions had violated his right to a fair trial. The Indiana Supreme Court agreed, finding that the trial court had failed to properly balance the need for a continuance against the potential harm to Ramirez's defense. Chief Justice Rush, writing for the court, emphasized that while no trial is perfect, every defendant is entitled to a fair one. The court noted that the repeated denial of access to the forensic interview 
and the refusal to grant even a one-day continuance fundamentally undermined Ramirez's ability to mount an effective defense. The trial court had not considered the defense's need to investigate the new allegations, nor had it balanced these needs against the state's interest in proceeding to trial. The court's ruling reversed Ramirez's conviction and ordered a new trial, setting a clear precedent that procedural fairness cannot be overlooked. The denial of access to evidence and refusal to grant even the briefest of continuances can have profound impacts on the outcome of a case.